everyone. Welcome to a special edition of Sox Machine Live. I am Josh Nelson as we are streaming live on March 26th, Sunday night, 2023. It's about 8 o'clock Central Time and I'm mentioning the date and the time because as far as information that we're going to be sharing regarding the Chicago White Sox and their rosters, spring training is wrapping up today. Today was the final spring training game for the Chicago White Sox and everyone else in Major League Baseball. Rosters are being finalized and you're seeing on Twitter some rookies that they are getting very emotional videos or hype videos from their major league teams. We haven't seen a hype video yet for Oscar Colas for the Chicago White Sox. I'm sure some one is coming. Uh, The Cardinals did a really good job. The Yankees have done a really good job with their announcement video. So I'm sure the White Sox will have something special for Oscar Colas as it's being reported that he is going to be on the 26-man roster for the Chicago White Sox as they prepare to face the Chicago Cubs for a couple of exhibition games before they make their way to Houston for Thursday night's opening day. And as a reminder, we will be having a watch party along with our friends from the 108 Four opening nights for the Chicago White Sox against the Houston Astros. That will start at 6 p.m. Central Time. But what's coming hot and heavy, and the White Sox have not officially announced this yet. We have not received a press release from the White Sox, or they have not tweeted it out yet. Uh, as I am currently streaming, and I'm keeping one eye, if I look to this direction, I'm keeping an eye on Twitter to see if the White Sox do say anything or finalize anything uh, via email or or public relations, but we are starting to get roster leaks. And these are coming from agents of players or team officials to get information out there. And I thought that'd be worthwhile to try to catch up uh, just in case if any news does break And If you do have any questions or thoughts about the White Sox roster, for those that are watching on YouTube, you can post your questions and comments in the chat window and we'll address them along with the live stream. Let's take a look at the White Sox projected starting roster for opening day in the 2023 season. And with this fancy graphic, this is what it's looking like with Yasmani Grandal being the starting catcher and then going to Andrew Vaughn as the first baseman. Elvis Andrews, the starting second baseman for the Chicago White Sox. Tim Anderson, of course, at shortstop. Yohan Mikata, been told that he feels fine. That is just precautionary reasons why they pulled him out after the second inning of today's spring training game against the Colorado Rockies due to back stiffness. He is day to day, just like everyone. Uh, so he should be fine for opening day. Andrew Benatendi, of course, the big free agent signing for the White Sox at left field. Luis Robert Jr. out in center field. And mentioned before, Oscar Colas will be joining the Chicago White Sox 26 man roster. He is expected to be the starting right fielder. And you see Eloy Jimenez. He's expected to be the DH. One thing to note about opening day, because it is Framber Valdez making the start, we could see Eloy in right field and Pedro Grafal, the new manager of the White Sox, going another direction at DH. Maybe. We'll see. Oscar Colas held his own against left-handed pitching last year in the minor leagues, both in double-A and triple-A. So maybe Pedro Grafal has some confidence in the rookie to put him in the lineup Get that glove in right field because Oscar Colas is a better defensive player than Eloy Jimenez. When it comes to Eloy playing in right field, and I know that was something that people were concerned about, the only possibility that I could see him starting right field in opening day was if the Chicago White Sox called up Jake Berger to be part of the 26-man roster. And last week during the minority owners meeting, there was a lot of gossip and rumors flying out of Glendale after that weekend of what could possibly be the roster for the Chicago White Sox as they get ready for opening day. And for the past week, there's been a lot of heat, a lot of smoke regarding two White Sox players in particular, Jake Berger and Hanser Alberto. Well, Daryl Van Scowen, the Chicago White Sox beat reporter of the Chicago Sun-Times, tweeted out that it is expected that Gavin Sheets is going to make the roster, not Jake Berger. Sebi Zavala is going to be the backup catcher. But Hans Alberto will be part of the White Sox 26-man roster. And Romy Gonzalez. So let's take a look at the bench here for the Chicago White Sox. So this is what it's looking like right now. And again, this is the rumor uh, that's being reported by Daryl Van Scowen. He was the first one to also report that Lurie Garcia 
will not be on the opening day roster for the Chicago White Sox. And that is big news. We'll get into that in a moment. But right now, this is what you're looking at for the White Sox bench. Romy Gonzalez, Gavin Sheets, Hanser Alberto, and Sebi Zavala. Monday morning during Sports Talk Radio in Chicago for both ESPN and 670 The Score, there's going to be a lot of discussion about how Pedro Grafal picked his guys. In particular, there are two players that are quote-unquote Pedro Grafal's guys. Romy Gonzalez and Hanser Alberto. I'll start with Hanser Alberto. Hanser Alberto played for the Kansas City Royals while Pedro Grafal was the bench coach, and he had a pretty good season for the Kansas City Royals in 2021. And then Alberto was part of the Los Angeles Dodgers roster, and he was known more for being their position player that pitched. He actually pitched 10 innings last year when the Dodgers were either in blowout games or they were getting blown out, but the Dodgers won like 111 games. So when they were blowing out teams, Hans Alberto would come out and he would pitch for the Los Angeles Dodgers. He is primarily a second base and third baseman. So if Tim Anderson, for example, gets nicked up, he has to go on the IL where he needs a day off. The thinking for the White Sox is to move Elvis Andrews from second base over to shortstop. In that scenario, Hanser Alberto would be expected to be the starting second baseman for the Chicago White Sox to help out in the middle infield. Or if Yohan Makata needs a day off, Hanser Alberto could be the starting third baseman for the Chicago White Sox. So Alberto kind of takes over the part for Lurie Garcia in being the primary backup infielder at second base or at third base. Hanser Alberto is not that great of a shortstop. So if both Tim Anderson and Elvis Andrews are not available, that's where Romy Gonzalez could get some time at shortstop. Romy Gonzalez, where is he going to play? And it really sounds like, <laughs> and, I, and I laugh, as you can see here, some people can say that Gavin Sheets is the White Sox fourth outfielder, and I don't think that's a very good idea. And Eloy Jimenez could be the White Sox fourth outfielder. And I don't think that's a very good idea. So it's looking like Romy Gonzalez could be the White Sox fourth outfielder, getting time in left, center, and right field. And he hasn't had a lot of time in the outfield, even during the minor leagues. So this is a pretty significant risk that new manager for the Chicago White Sox, Pedro Grafal, is going with right now by putting Romy Gonzalez in this particular position where he is going to be the fourth outfielder for the Chicago White Sox. If Andrew Benatendi needs a day off, uh, I, I would assume that if Benatendi needs a day off, that's when we could see Romy Gonzalez on left field. Because if Oscar Colas needs a day off in the outfield, I think the White Sox are going to put Eloy Jimenez in right field for those particular situations. So it is a bit odd and we'll get to the comments because the comments are fast and furious right now about these particular two players. It didn't make sense last week when we we're talking about the possibility of Hans Alberto. That was our previous podcast episode for Sox Machine. Is Hans Alberto going to make this roster? And it seemed on Wednesday that the possibility was real and it's becoming more real with every passing day as Jim Margulis wrote it up and he did the research and showed that, Hey, if he doesn't make a decision of the opt out by the weekend, then that's the clue that he's going to make the roster. If he's getting a hint that he's not going to make the roster, Hanzo Alberto would have been like all these other veterans that were seen across major league baseball and opting out of his minor league contract to become a free agent and see if he can join anybody else's team, because this would be the time. Uh, for teams figuring out the rest of their 26-man roster, even though that's a tough gig to get for Hanzo Alberto. There's, teams have Hanzo Alberto's in their minor league systems that they're, they're already trying to squeeze into their opening day roster. So you got Romy Gonzalez, and you got Hanzo Alberto to be some of the, like, the utility guys. Alberto, utility infielder, especially at second base, third base. Who knows? Maybe he'll pitch some this year. Romy Gonzalez could be playing everywhere for the Chicago White Sox. Gavin Sheets, again, I don't think he's going to be playing much outfield in this type of scenario, especially if you have someone like Romy Gonzalez who's more athletic than Gavin Sheets. I think you'd rather have the athleticism in the outfield over Gavin Sheets. 
So Gavin Sheets becomes the primary power bat off the bench and maybe spells Andrew Vaughn time to time at first base. Uh, okay, we'll see. Because even if you have tough righties, I think you still want Eloy Jimenez to be your DH over Gavin Sheets. So I'm not particularly sure just how many plate appearances Gavin Sheets is going to get here unless Andrew Vaughn's back issue is more severe than it, than it's being let on. Right now, it's just being told, much like Yohan Makata, it's just back stiffness. He's getting over it. If we're in the regular season, he'd be playing. It's spring training. We're trying to be safe here. The least controversial of the bench pieces right now uh, is obviously Sabi Zavala. And he is the backup catcher for Yes Money Grandal. We'll see how many games Savala catches in 2023. Uh, Yasmani Grandal is trying a new catching stance uh, to help out his knees. Uh, and if he could help out his lower half and be able to stay within the White Sox lineup for more games, he thinks it'll also help him out offensively. So that's the White Sox bench. And again, we'll go look at the roster here for 2023. This is what it's looking like for all those that are just hopping into the live stream. Welcome. I'm Josh Nelson from Sox Machine. Thank you for hopping in to this special edition Sox Machine Live as we are taking a look at the recent White Sox rumors when it comes to the roster. This is what's the projected starting roster. Again, Andrew Benatendi in left field, Luis Robert Jr. in center field, Oscar Colas winning the job for right field, Yoan Makata, Tim Anderson, Elvis Andrews, and Andrew Vaughn in the infield, Yasmani Grandal being the primary catcher, and Eloy Jimenez as the DH. Let's take a look at some questions and comments here that's coming in here. So we got, we got as in rec, Hans Roberto has some experience in right field and left field. Wouldn't be surprised to see him both and Romy play three to four positions. Alberto does have experience. I would not recommend that. His range is pretty limited in those corners. And we could even see previously his footwork at third base isn't all that great either. So even though he does have that type of experience, I would not do that. I'd rather have Roby Gonzalez be in the outfield. And Gavin Sheets, he doesn't necessarily embarrass himself like Andrew Vaughn did in the outfield. So if given those options, I'd rather see Romy Gonzalez or even Gavin Sheets or even Eloy Jimenez in the outfield. I think it's pretty simple with Hans or Alberto. He's there to help out at second base and in third base. Uh, question or comment about Billy Hamilton. Billy Hamilton would be going to Charlotte in this scenario. Yes, from Greg Miller. Greg, in this particular situation, because Billy's not being added to a major league roster, he's one of these major league veterans that can opt out of the minor league contract and become a free agent. And he could try to get a job elsewhere. We'll see on how successful Billy Hamilton is in that pursuit. Again, it's really tough here because every team in Major League Baseball right now is trying to finalize their 26-man rosters and get ready to go for opening day. So what's the hope here? You opt out, become a, become a free agent again, and hope that you're somebody else's 26th man? More more than likely, Billy Hamilton will not be getting a major league job. And then I think he's going to have to choose which team gives him the easiest path to make the majors. And that's where he's going to sign to go play AAA baseball. Is that the White Sox? I don't know. Based on the injury history, there would be a good chance. Uh, hitting in Charlotte could help him out a great deal. Billy Hamilton had a terrible offensive screen training. He hit .069, so a nice batting average when you look at the number. But no, it, it's not good, and I don't know how much of a hitter Billy Hamilton is. I think he's going to struggle uh, finding a job. Uh, <laughs> L.A. with this comment, playing outfielders with no outfield experience is kind of our thing. Ain't that the truth for the Chicago White Sox continuing the trend. Uh, we got our friend Colin overseas in England across the pond writing to us. How does this bench help you win a game either defensively against left-handed pitching or on the base paths? It seems a bench to cover injuries. That's the job of the 40 man roster, not the bench. And Colin, you bring up a really good point. If they're facing a left-handed pitcher, which they're going to on opening day in Framber Valdez, you're going to have to have Oscar Colas, I think, in my opinion, be the right fielder. I don't think you're going to start Romy Gonzalez in right field, are you, on opening day against the Houston Astros? 
in, in right field because he just bats right-handed. This is where, again, the rumor was that Jake Berger was going to be making the opening day roster for the White Sox. And this is where we could piece it together and be like, okay, this makes sense. Uh, he's get, He has the most played appearances in spring training over everyone. They've given him a lot of rope this spring. He's got some power. And yeah, on opening day, he could be the DH against a lefty, a lefty, a type of pitcher that he mashes. And sure, Eloy could be out in right field and hopefully he doesn't hurt himself on the very first game of the season. And you could stack up righties. And when the Astros go to their bullpen, which is very right-handed heavy, then yeah, you can go to Oscar Colas to pinch hit or replace Eloy as a defensive substitution later in the game. You would have those possibilities, but why would you build your 26-man roster for that one game when the rest of the Astros pitchers for the weekend are going to be right-handed? I totally understand as far as that logic. So Jake Berger not being on the team, okay, it gets a little weird on opening day that you're going to have to, I think, have Oscar Colas starting in right field facing Framber Valdez. And again, he held his own against left-handed pitching last year. Uh, we'll see if he can make an impact immediately. And Eloy is going to be your DH. And I don't think you're going to swap out Gavin Sheet, uh, Eloy Jimenez for Gavin Sheets as they go into the bullpen for righties. You're still going to have Eloy getting those at-bats and Oscar Kloss is left-handed. Uh, I've always felt... Uh, as soon as they decided that Oscar Claus was the path the White Sox wanted to go in right field, that it pretty much rendered Gavin Sheets useless unless Andrew Vaughn got hurt. I just don't know how many plate appearances Gavin Sheets is going to get. And honestly, he hits so poorly on the road. Like, he only hits at home. Only hits at home. 10 of the first 13 games this season for the White Sox are on the road. So he's got that hill that he's got to climb to prove that he can hit away from guarantee Ray Field, which he hasn't. And I just don't know how many plate appearances he's going to have. I wonder if this is the best use of Gavin Sheets' time. He has an option left. Maybe have him play first base down at Charlotte, but it seems like the White Sox are going to have Jake Berger be the primary first baseman for the Charlotte Knights, and he's going to get those plate appearances. It, this is what happens when you've got like three guys that are similar ages at the same spot. <laughs> you know, Andrew Vaughn, Gavin Sheets, Jake Berger, Eloy Jimenez. Like you got four guys for two spots. Uh, this is kind of the, the situation that they're in. So I, I totally understand your point, Colin, that this is a bench to help out in case if the White Sox get hurt immediately. I wouldn't want to think like that because uh, that's just bad mojo. Uh, we got Matt here. Matt made the comment. I don't understand why Romy Gonzalez and Alberto are on the same team as far as Hans or Alberto. Yeah. Uh, I probably would have went with someone that actually played in the outfield. If you're looking to have a fifth outfielder, even though they can't hit like Jake Marisnik or Billy Hamilton, I know they can play outfield. You got Romy Gonzalez now on this bench, which he shows flashes at times that he can hit. But he showed a lot last year that he can't hit, especially velocity. And he's never played in the outfield before. So this really feels like Pedro Grafal rewarding one of his guys that he's been hyping since grafal has got the job. He's been hyping up Romy Gonzalez for more than a month in early February that he's done all these things in the offseason to get better. We only saw Romy Gonzalez start to hit late in spring training. Early part of spring training, Romy Gonzalez was not hitting. Uh, at all uh, so that that yeah it, it is a bit interesting with Romy Gonzalez I, I think that could be one of the sticking points just going through in the comments uh, Fred so zero defense off the bench this team never learns Hanzo Roberto could play a really good second base <laughs> I have to laugh there because the only way he's playing second base is if Tim Anderson or Elvis Andrews get hurt and then you got a whole other problem there for the Chicago White Sox. So, yeah, you don't have a, a defensive replacement, uh, especially in the outfield uh, for the White Sox. But Ben Attendee, good left fielder. Luis Robert, one of the better defensive outfielders in Major League Baseball, especially in center field. Oscar Colas, I think, has shown during spring training and what we've seen in the minor leagues last year that he can play right field. 
So defensively for the White Sox, I think they're much better in the outfield than they were last year. So I wouldn't be too concerned if that is your outfield for a game early in the 2023 season. I don't think you're looking for a defensive replacement. And then for the White Sox infield, Yohan Makata getting better at third base. He's good at third base. Tim Anderson at short. Elvis Andrews at second. We'll see how Andrews does. That's a new position for him, but he looked good during spring training. And with the shift ban, I'd rather have two short stops up the middle, uh, especially one like Andrews that has pretty good range still and does a good job moving in on slow rollers, as we saw last year when he took over for an injured Tim Anderson at shortstop. And then we got Andrew Vaughn, who's going back to his natural position at first base. We'll see on how he fares. We, we don't know if he's a major league caliber first baseman defensively. We're all hoping that he is. And then you got Yasmani Grandal. Uh, so the next comment here, we got Michael, zero offense, zero defense off the bench. Awesome. It kind of leads Michael into the theory of nobody gets hurt. Everyone stay healthy. The White Sox will have no problems. Uh, Lee here, please know Eloy minimize injuries and errors at all times, including sheets in the outfield. Lee totally win. The less innings, fewer innings that Eloy's out in the outfield, I think is better. It's, like it's better for Eloy in the long term. I just know that he is going to be getting some starts in right field. We may see him get those starts early in the season. Uh, Aloha, Mr. Hand. Uh, we'll get to your comment here in a moment. Okay, so how much of these roster moves have to do with the man crunch and the refusal to shed some of the crap? Okay, this is an excellent point because we're going to get to it when I look over the bullpen and the news that's coming about who is going to be the White Sox bullpen. But Mr. Aloha Hand makes a good point here. Romy Gonzalez already on the 40-man roster. Sevi Zavala, already on the 40-man roster. Gavin Sheets, already on the 40-man roster. UDFA, Lurie Garcia, that opens up a 40-man spot for Hanser Alberto. So you don't have to have these headaches or this 40-man gymnastics to add someone like Hanser Alberto. You've done that by not bringing back Lurie Garcia for this season. So that makes it easy. And on that point, let's go look at what the White Sox projected bullpen is going to be. Again, this is coming from Daryl Van Scowen of the Chicago Sun-Times when he tweeted out that Gregory Santos is going to win the eighth spot in the bullpen for the Chicago White Sox. So your projected opening day bullpen for the White Sox is looking like Ronaldo Lopez, Kendall Graveman, Aaron Bummer, Jake Diekman, Jose Ruiz, who looked really good in the World Baseball Classic, Joe Kelly, Jimmy Lambert, and Gregory Santos, which the White Sox acquired from the San Francisco Giants during the offseason. As I wrote for SoxMachine.com earlier this afternoon, the White Sox Rule 5 draft pick Nick Avila not making the roster. So the process right now for Avila is that the White Sox can offer him back to the San Francisco Giants for half the cost of the White Sox drafted Nick Avila, which was $50,000 during the winter meetings. So half the cost is $25,000. If the Giants want Nick Avila back, they got to pay $25,000. If they don't want Nick Avila back, Nick Avila enters waivers, and that gives the White Sox an opportunity to bring Avila back to the AAA roster, to the Charlotte Knights, and keep Nick Avila in the fold. But since they didn't decide to keep Nick Avila, that opened up an opportunity for Gregory Santos. So this is what you're looking like for the projected bullpen right now for the White Sox. Again, Lopez, Graveman, Bummer, Diekman, Ruiz, Kelly, Lambert, and Santos. Who is the closer in this situation? I think is a question that we're going to be asking of Pedro Grafal early. Let's see if the White Sox have any leads in this early series against the Houston Astros. And then we're going to hopefully tell right away who he has the most confidence in and try to close games for the White Sox. He's already made it known that He's going to use the best guys in the most high leverage situations. And as we know, in the ninth inning, that's not always the most high leverage situation. So it could be pretty interesting early in who Grafal is handing the ball to to try to close any leads that the White Sox have in the ninth inning. But back to Mr. Aloha Hand's question or comment about the 40-man crunch. To add Santos, Matt Foster has a forearm strain. 
And we know with pitchers that forearm strains could be a huge red flag. If the red flag is confirmed that he needs to miss significant time, the White Sox can send Matt Foster to the 60-day IL, and that opens up a 40-man roster spot for Gregory Santos. So that's how Santos gets his spot. Now, the big question that I've had is how are the White Sox going to handle Liam Hendricks? And Lance Lynn, who joined AJ Brzezinski's new podcast, and oh, I made note of it. I was going to figure out what the actual title is. I just know it as the AJ Brzezinski show because he's the star of it. It's pretty good. I highly recommend watching it. Uh, Ken Rosenthal pops in from time to time. Uh, and AJ Brzezinski is on Twitter as well. So you could follow AJ Brzezinski now on Twitter. But during the AJ Brzezinski show, Lance Lynn shared some insight of what's going on with Liam Hendricks. And that Hendricks is going to have another round of tests in early April. And if those test results are good, as in Liam Hendricks is in remission, we could see Liam Hendricks real soon for the Chicago White Sox. And he has been throwing bullpens with the team when he's feeling well in Glendale. So it's not like he's just sitting around not doing anything. He's doing whatever he can or is allowed to do to get ready for the 2023 season. That would be huge news. That would be significant news for the Chicago White Sox if Liam Hendricks can avoid going to the 60-day injured list and he could rejoin the White Sox sooner than later, which puts, again, I'll bring this back up, which puts Santos' spot in jeopardy when we get into May. And this is where it's going to fluctuate and everybody that watches the White Sox know the bullpen also deals with injuries as well. And there is the matter of Garrett Crochet who's ramping up to rejoin the White Sox. And the hope is that he'll rejoin the White Sox sometime in late May and in, or in early June. So right now, these are the eight guys. Are these the eight guys in June? Probably not. Jimmy Lambert has a minor league option. Gregory Santos, has a minor league option so the white Sox can send him down we'll see if who's actually still healthy come june for the chicago white Sox when it comes to the bullpen this is going to be a fluid situation for the white Sox bullpen especially when it comes to the 40-man roster and when it comes to the fact that they could possibly add liam Hendricks and garrett crochet sometime during the season so one fingers crossed that liam Hendricks gets great news uh, cause we all know that cancer is incredibly serious and incredibly dangerous situation. And if Liam Hendricks is in remission, that's awesome on a personal level. And knowing just the intensity of Liam Hendricks, he will do everything that he possibly can to get himself ready to rejoin the white Sox. So whether that's doing his own spring training camp, his own personal spring training camp in Glendale, uh, joining the Charlotte Knights, uh, to be pitching out of some bullpen games to get into game action. That could be fun. In early May, you could see Garrett Crochet and Liam Hendricks piggybacking uh, in games, which that would be fun to watch on the live streams or the, for the fans that entered Charlotte, get to watch Garrett Crochet and Hendricks get their innings in before the White Sox give them the clearance to rejoin the team in Chicago sometime in late May or in early June. So that's the best possible outcome for Liam Hendricks. If the test results are not good, then I could see Hendricks going on the 60-day IL, and that opens up another 40-man spot for the Chicago White Sox. So that's how they're doing it right now, Mr. Aloha Hand, as far as the the 40-man gymnastics right now. So DFA and Larry Garcia opens a spot for Hans Alberto. And I think to your point, is probably a driving factor in how the rest of the bench is built. For the White Sox, these guys are already on the 40-man roster. The bullpen, if they send Matt Foster to the 60-day IL because of injury, that opens up the spot for Gregory Santos. So, yeah, that's that's what we're looking at right now for the White Sox bullpen and as far as the bench. Uh, so some additional comments here be before we wrap up, we got John. John, if Grandal gets hurt and Zavala takes over catcher, do you have faith in him to at least replicate his production from last year? And if not, is there anyone else out there that could be serviceable? Suddenly, catcher is a very difficult position for teams to fill. There's just not enough quality catchers to go around. 
So one, Grandal don't get hurt. <laughs> but two, strangely enough, I do have confidence that Subby Savala in a pinch can be a reliable catcher for the White Sox. He seems to have a really good reputation with the starting pitchers. We've seen some pop from him during spring training. We had the over under for total home runs for Sebi Zavala in 2023 at nine and a half home runs. And we, Jim and I both picked over just because, well, we've seen Zavala have a three home run game, but if he plays 80 some games this year, and if he does hit for more power, if he's going for the fences, maybe he can hit 10 home runs uh, and help out the White Sox in that end as far as the home run total. I am not crazy about Carlos Perez. That's where I would get worried. If Grandal goes on the injured list, I get worried about Carlos Perez. I don't think he's, I just don't think he's a catcher. I think he can hit, but he's got blocking issues. He's got framing issues. He doesn't have the quickest release. He can have a strong arm at times, but it's the whole transition from getting into a throwing motion and having an accurate throw to second base. Defensively, he needs a lot of work. He needs a lot of work. It, if he was as good as Sebi Zavala was defensively, I think there would be a real competition between Sebi Zavala and Carlos Perez, but there is no competition at all because it's not even close defensively between Zavala and Perez. So fingers crossed Grandal does not get hurt, but if he does, I think the White Sox can count on Zavala for a couple of months. Uh, I just, I'm not crazy about Carlos Perez. Uh, being the backup catcher. Uh, Maddie Mitch, I think I'd rather have Billy Hamilton be the fourth outfielder and Romy Gonzalez go to AAA. The White Sox have more control over Romy than Billy. Yes, uh, I could understand that point. The White Sox would have to open up a 40-man roster spot for Billy Hamilton. I think there's ways they could have done that. But with Romy Gonzalez... Yeah, more plate appearances could help out as, as far as his development. Again, I just don't know how much playing time, if everybody is healthy, that Romy Gonzalez is going to get, right? I, I just don't know. And if you want him to continue to develop, I guess you're making the decision that he's going to continue to develop in the major leagues. But this is a guy last year that whiffed 45% of the time against fastballs from right-handers. So I think he's a huge liability against right-handed pitching. And you're hoping that what you saw from spring training and working with the hitting coaches in Chicago, that you could cut that down and he could be a serviceable major league backup. Like, I think he could still learn and still build up some confidence playing every day in Charlotte. And he can play multiple positions, play more in the outfield, and build up that confidence. Uh, previous comment, Romy Gonzalez is joining this awful lineage of White Sox players that are now learning on the fly on how to play Major League Outfield. So that is a bit, uh, that's a bit scary. But next comment from Michael, Ronaldo Lopez should be the closer. Graven proved all last year and throughout his career that he can't pitch back-to-back -back days. He can't be a closer in that scenario. That's a pretty good that's a pretty good argument, Michael. Yeah, Graveman has proved that he can't pitch on back-to-back -back days. I like the idea of giving Ronaldo Lopez a shot. Uh, I think at times he could hit 100 miles per hour. The slider has gotten better. And uh, at this moment, why not? Why not give Lopez a shot? You're to still need Graveman in those high-leverage situations, especially with his power sinker that really comes in handy. And I just don't know how available Aaron Bummer is going to be at the beginning part of the season. The, uh, Pedro Grafal may have to lean heavily on Jose Ruiz, Kendall Graveman, and Ronaldo Lopez trying to close out wins. Matt, thank you so much. The AJ Brzezinski show is called Foul Territory TV. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, going down the list, uh, we got Thomas here. Ronaldo Lopez is closer 100, 100 miles per hour three times last night. Thank you. I, I did not see... The speed readings from the White Sox game uh, last night. So, again, he, he can hit triple digits. The thing is, is that the fastball just doesn't have a lot of movement for Ronaldo Lopez. So, that's going to be something that we monitor as now the White Sox go from there's no stat cast data unless they play against the Rockies and Diamondbacks 
to we get all the StatCast data now on Thursday. And we could really monitor just to see how much progression that we've seen from these players. Uh, Aloha, Mr. Han, will Hendricks and Crochet be billed as the White Sox big midseason acquisitions? Maybe. <laughs> we've, been, we've been down that road. We have been down that road. And uh, as in rec, I'm with you here. I hope Ruiz, who pitched in the World Baseball Classic, is the same Jose Ruiz that pitches in April. The one thing to look for from Jose Ruiz is this power changeup that he's got, where he's throwing this changeup 90, 91, and man, he was fooling Juan Soto. And if you can fool Juan Soto with that pitch, I think you can fool any left-handed pitch uh, hitter with that type of pitch. So this opening C series, if uh, if Jordan Alvarez comes up in a big spot, and your choices are Jose Ruiz or Jake Diekman, I I think I'm going with Ruiz, wouldn't you? I, I just don't have a lot of confidence in Jake Diekman. Oh, that's why I'm hoping if uh, I'm hoping if Aaron Bummer is healthier than it's let on. We have not seen a lot of them in spring training. Uh, Greg Miller, uh, I want to make sure I get this question. If a day comes when Luis Robert Jr. needs rest, who plays center field? Excellent question. I think more than likely it's going to be Oscar Colas moving from right to center field. As he got some time in center field, he got some time in center field during spring training. He played some center field last year in the minor leagues. I, I think that is the most likely and then they can either play Eloy Jimenez in right field or Gavin Sheets in right field. I'd be surprised if they play Romy Gonzalez over Oscar Colas in center field because, again, uh, we just have not seen Romy Gonzalez play center field in the minor leagues uh, for, for a while. Uh, <laughs> a comment from L.A. Let's not pretend there will be sore legs and Jake Berger's bat will magically find its way into the lineup. Probably, yeah, sometime in... Sometime in May, sometime in May. Uh, and then as in rec, in what situation other than throwing games, would you opt for Jake? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sunday, if you're up by six, <laughs> then you can throw out Jake Diekman. If he hasn't pitched the, the entire weekend, this is something we're going to be talking about tomorrow night on the Sox Machine Podcast is that opening weekend. We're also going to be making our season predictions as well. Uh, our friend Lawrence Holmes is 6 over the score. will be joining Jim and I. Uh, by the way, uh, if you want to hit up Jim on social media, at Sox Machine or in the comments section of SoxMachine.com, uh, Jim won his curling event in Kansas City. That's why he's not available tonight. He went to Kansas City uh, to participate in a curling tournament, and he won. Uh, so pretty exciting stuff. But we're going to talk about that opening series in Houston and how Pedro Grafal and Ethan Katz are going to handle that because, as we all know, when you start a season, starting pitchers are not fully ramped up. They want you to believe they can go 100 pitches, but many cannot. And I'm sure with Dylan C., Lance Lynn, and Lucas Giolito, I'm assuming they're going to go 85, 90 pitches, so pretty close to being fully ramped up. And hopefully that gets them through five, six innings but it's the Houston Astros. And if the Astros hit as well as they did last year against the White Sox, especially in Houston, that may only get you through like four innings in some games. Uh, so that's a scary thought. And then you got Clevenger and Kopech, and you're hoping that Clevenger and Kopech give you at least 80 pitches and get you to the fifth inning, I mean, I think Clevenger's more ready to go for opening day than Michael Kopech, and that's a bit scary. What this all boils down to, with the pitching probables being Dylan Cease, Lance Lynn, Lucas Giolito, and Mike Clevenger, the White Sox bullpen's going to be busy this opening weekend. And they're going to have a lot of innings, and then they have to get on the plane Sunday and head home, and then they got their home opener against the San Francisco Giants. So they got five straight games, so they don't get a day off until next Tuesday to be able to get that extra rest day. So hopefully the White Sox starters hold, and they are effective, and they do a good job against one of the best lineups in Major League Baseball. 
and especially Cease, Lynn, and Giolito can get into the six innings of their starts. If they could do that, that will go a long way in trying to keep the bullpen fresh. If they falter, the bullpen could be quite taxed after the opening weekend. And then Michael Kopech gets the ball to start the home opener against the San Francisco Giants, and that bullpen could be tired. And then you're going to have no choice but to pitch Jake Diekman in some critical situations in the games. So that's kind of how that opening weekend is looking right now. And, you know, it's great to be able to analyze and think through these situations now that spring training's over and opening day is just a few days away. Uh, last count comment here before I sign off from Aloha, Mr. Hand. Will Sox Machine be on 670 the score this season? We are Fridays, typically at 1 o'clock, unless the Chicago Cubs play. If the Cubs play, then we'll be moved up in the morning. We are incredibly grateful of Dan Bernstein and Lawrence Holmes for having us on again. I know that they really enjoyed as far as the conversations, even though the White Sox were not a very enjoyable conversation topic last year. Uh, But they appreciated what we brought to their show. So, yes, we will be back this season, Fridays, on 670 The Score on the Bernstein and Holmes show. And there'll be more details about that tomorrow night as we record with Lawrence Holmes on the next Sox Machine podcast. But that will do it for this Sox Machine Live, guys. Thank you so much for hopping into the live stream and watching me talk about the White Sox roster rumors of what's coming down the pipe, looking at what the projected starters are, what the White Sox projected bench is, what their projected bullpen is going to be once things are finalized, which is going to be a press release from the Chicago White Sox. We, of course, will be reporting that on SoxMachine.com, so you can look forward to that. And hopefully we do get final confirmation tomorrow as final confirmations going all over the place in Major League Baseball. If you just discovered Sox Machine, you can follow us on Twitter. We're at Sox Machine. If this is the first time you have watched the Sox Machine video, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Sox Machine. And the Sox Machine podcast episodes are uploaded into our podcast feed, which you can subscribe to the show wherever you listen to podcasts such as Spotify and Apple Music. If you enjoy our work and one more, we do have a Patreon. You can visit us at patreon.com slash Sox Machine, where monthly plans start at $2. Our Patreon supporters get exclusive content, ad-free versions of the podcast and website. And when we have new Sox Machine swag, they're the first ones to receive it in the Sox Machine store. Again, monthly plans start at $2, or you could save on an annual subscription. Great timing with opening day coming up. Again, go to patreon.com slash Sox Machine and sign up today. That will do it for this special edition Sox Machine Live. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Josh Nelson. Chat with you soon.